In several videos, I've talked about whether or not there is a reasonable expectation of privacy whilst out in a public place, because the default position in a public place is that there are no general restrictions on taking photographs or filming or vlogging. But each time I say this, I do air the warning that each case turns on its own facts, and there may well be some situations that give rise to a reasonable expectation of privacy. Now, whilst this might not transcend into a full-blown right to privacy whilst out in a public place, it certainly blurs the lines when it comes to considering Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights, which is the right to respect for private and family life. And to that end, I have mentioned a number of times that because of a decision of the Court of Appeal, it does depend on all of the circumstances as to whether or not there is a reasonable expectation of privacy and whether those rights are infringed. And that's what I'm talking about today. But first of all, if you're new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law and I'm on a mission to help at least a million people. So please hit the subscribe button and share this video or any of my other videos with someone that you might think would find it useful but can't necessarily afford legal advice. Because whilst these videos cannot be a replacement for legal advice, they can certainly help you along the way. So the balancing exercise in this situation is between the reasonable expectation to privacy coupled with the Article 8 right to respect for private family life as against the Article 10 right to the freedom of expression. Article 10 protects your right to express your views and opinions aloud, whether that be by published articles, books, leaflets, television, radio broadcasting, works of art, or on the internet and social media. But it's important to note that both Article 8 and Article 10 are not absolute rights, meaning they can be restricted in certain situations usually with matters of public interest or importance, national security, crime and disorder, and health and morals, to name a few. And so this is a very difficult balancing exercise indeed, because the rights under Article 8 and under Article 10 must be upheld as best as possible, striking that fair balance so as not to interfere with the rights under each article. For example, in the case of White and Sweden, which was a complaint filed at the European Court of Human Rights. This was where press articles alleged criminal activity, namely the killing of the Swedish Prime Minister in 1986. And of course the articles included the conflicting views of the person in question. But clearly because these allegations were a matter of national public interest, the court dismissed the complaint. But coming back to England and Wales, the Court of Appeal case that I often refer to was Weller and Others and Associated Newspapers. This case involved the family of a well-known British musician, including his children. They were out in Los Angeles, California, shopping and going to cafes and so on, and paparazzi photographs of them were published online by English newspapers. The argument here, of course, was that the musician felt that whilst he was a public figure whilst on stage, he was otherwise a private person and did not want photographs of his children published in newspapers or online. Whilst he had mentioned his young children in interviews, he had not gone into any great depth about his private life or his children, during these interviews. And the importance as to whether or not somebody had the reasonable expectation of privacy is important because any claim for the misuse of private information is likely to fail if the person did not have such an expectation of privacy. And so in discussing the issue in this case, the court drew on the case of Murray and MGN of 2008, and in particular the following paragraphs of the judgment. As we see it, the question whether there is a reasonable expectation of privacy is a broad one, which takes account of all of the circumstances of the case. They include the attributes of the claimant, the nature of the activity in which the claimant was engaged, the place at which it was happening, the nature and purpose of the intrusion, the absence of consent and whether it was known or could have been inferred, the effect on the claimant and the circumstances in which and the purposes for which the information came into the hands of the publisher. And this approach was endorsed by the Supreme Court in 2015. But the court went on. The taking of photographs in a public street must be taken to be one of the ordinary incidents of living in a free community. It is not, however, in dispute that a person's privacy rights may be infringed even in relation to things done in a public place. In Campbell, for example, photographs were taken of the claimant as she was in the street outside the clinic where she had been receiving therapy. 
All the information about the claimant's addiction and attendance at the clinic was private and confidential. The majority of the House of Lords in Campo held that publishing of photographs taken of the claimant in the circumstances of that case was in breach of her reasonable expectation of privacy. So pulling all of those strands together and considering each of those elements in great detail, the court held that the children did have a reasonable expectation to privacy under Article 8, which outweighed the newspaper's right to the freedom of expression. So as I've said in previous videos, it is never going to be a clear-cut case. It's always going to depend on the circumstances. Taking, for example, a situation where a person believes a criminal offence has taken place, or they are documenting something for public interest or safety concerns. This is also going to be taken into account when determining whether or not there was a reasonable expectation of privacy. In other words, if the person being filmed is not necessarily innocent in their actions, then they can hardly complain about being filmed whilst carrying out such activity. So I hope that gives you some food for thought when considering these issues. Don't forget to like this video if you think it's useful, and remember, stay humble and subscribe.